Hello, my Sock Universe. Yes, first leg of Champions League playoffs is in the books. And I have to say, most of the ties are still open. I can see at most three where I think uh, we have a clear favorite now. I mean, there are maybe three where we have a clear favorite now. But I think everything is still to play for, especially if I look at some of these games. But we'll. I'll walk you through them. I saw the Tuesday games more or less live and the Wednesday games I watched some highlights. I also realized that now my sound quality, I'm not very happy with it. It's a little bit too low. I know I have to work on that. I hope I will find a solution soonish. I had a microphone, but it doesn't work with my new phone and that's what, what bugs me. And yeah, so let's look at the uh, games. Uh, We'll start in Prague with Slavia playing against Midtjylland, which was a very, very weird game in many ways because um, Slavia was definitely the team that had uh, more control, more experience, more cohesion, but the chances uh, to score were all for Midtjylland. Uh, <laughs> it was and, uh, big chances at that, really, really big, ch big chances. So uh, it ended a nil-nil draw, which probably the draw was the correct result. But it was a weird game. Uh, let's talk about the Riders of Luck from Salzburg. Uh, if you haven't, if you've been living on on, on on the rock or you only follow the Champions League once it reaches the group stages, Salzburg's record in the Champions League qualification is abysmal. I think they had 11 tries and 11 times they failed in sometimes comical circumstances. And I'm not sure if they are through here as well. They win 2-1, but... The opponent, uh, like half the starting team was missing because of uh, positive COVID tests. So it was a makeshift squad. And still Salzburg starts out as you would expect with a lot of dom 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 dominance. Then, they uh, then one counter attack by Maccabi and Piton lobs the goalkeeper, who I have, I have to say that this guy is in the conversation for being uh, the national team goalkeeper. I'm always, always surprised because he's not good with the foot. Yes, he is lanky and tall, maybe a good shot stopper, but I don't rate him that highly. I don't have much confidence in him. And so, yeah, same story. And Salzburg actually needs some time to go back. Yes, they create more chances. Um, and probably would have deserved to get an equalizer at halftime. They get it after the half uh, when I think it was Koita who was brought down in the box uh, and then Shoboslai very luckily converts. I mean, the keeper was right there and it hits the post and it goes in. And a few minutes later, um, Shoboslai sends Koita who then uh, crossed the goal mouth to Okugawa who can make it 2-1. And you think Salzburg is going to run, run, run away with it. But for some reason, they, I don't know, they, they blamed it on the humidity and the heat there and the unusual circumstances with all the COVID measurements. But I honestly have to tell you, it's a disgrace that a side as talented as Salzburg cannot just put away Maccabi Tel Aviv, a makeshift team. Not if this was the full squad, I think it would be a proper match, probably. Still saw Salzburg should go uh, through in that one. Uh, no, but uh, they had to hang on to it. I mean, Maccabi Tel Aviv had chances to uh, actually get at least an equalizer. So yeah, it uh, was anything but convincing. Probably the best game on Tuesday was Krasnogardar against Pauk. And before we talk, talk about the game, can I say how much I love those Pauk away jerseys? They are absolutely gorgeous. The game was also a very interesting one because um, while well, Krasnata was probably having more of the game and is a very talented squad, I mean, we don't need to talk about that. And the other thing I really liked in the broadcast is they showed the stadium and the surroundings with the lights lit on the black. It looked really beautiful. I'm not sure if it is beautiful at daylight. But at night, it looks awesome. And I mean, the whole stadium in Krasnodar with the LED screens on the inside, ah, it's pretty impressive stuff, I have to say. Uh, but yeah, no, Russia, they can build stuff like that. Then they don't have other things, though. But yeah, a uh, Pauk plate let, uh, you know, absorbed a Krasnodar and let them come and was always dangerous on the count counter-attack. And... Got a big break early on when uh, Schwab, former uh, player in Austria uh, for Rapid, now he plays for a team that I like, 
uh, made a shot that was blocked by hand and penalty was given and Pelkas steps up and shoots it right down the middle and the goalkeeper who is seen kind of as a Russian goalkeeping prodigy just does not move and it's basically the penalty shot is at him and for me this was in many ways, in many ways, almost indicative of the match, where Pauk just don't take their chances. Um, Pauk gets the lead uh, after a nice assist from uh, Steve Sivkovic, because with his outside, uh, with kind of the back to goal, uh, puts it into the net in the 32nd. Really nicely taken goal, and at that moment you gotta think, yeah, Pauk is more probably gonna pull through. But then they give up another up uh, a stupid penalty. I mean the challenge in there. I'm sorry. And Klesson also down the middle uh, converts. I hate penalties down the middle. They gotta be found out very very soon. I think uh, a goalkeeper just needs to take uh, you know don't give anything away and uh, half the time or maybe uh, yeah it seems almost half the time but one, one, one third of the time just stand upright. It's like that. The second half again, same pattern. Krasnodar more op more uh, control of con con control of the game, but Park really really playing cleverly, and they should have absolutely a goal. Uh, they just hit the post, and then um, Kabea, after Berg assist in the 70th, makes it 2-1. Um, again, if Park takes the chances, there's a draw in there, and Park would look good uh, going into the group stage. Um, I still think the chances are, are good, but it's a little bit more tilted now to Krasnodar, but a 1-0 is enough. Staying in Greece, Greece having two teams in the playoff. Uh, Olympiakos playing Omonia, and those Omonia shirts very much like Nigeria in uh, color tone. Uh, I think it was all dominated by Olympiakos from what I could see. Uh, who also had interesting shirts, and I was not sure if this was Ardidas or whatever. I have. A jersey review is gonna come for uh, Europa League and Champions League and Olymp Olympics and Omonia, surely in there. Uh, from what I could get, again, I only saw highlights. Olympiakos controlled the game, uh, but could not really find the breakthrough, and Omonia was defending uh, valiantly, as you would say. Um, it is then a penalty by Val Buena that gives them the lead in the 69th, and you think, yeah, it probably will stay, but then very late on El Arabi scores the uh, the second goal which probably is, gives the one decisive advantage uh, to a team in this playoff. Mold against Ferenc Varos was probably the craziest game uh, although you know again I saw highlights it was uh, ahead of the game uh, Ferenc Varos especially Boli uh, proclaimed we're gonna kill them and yeah he scores a goal he backs it up um, but then, kind of, it was a little bit uh, not so exciting then. Uzuni, right after that, gives Ferenc Varsh a 2 0 lead, and you think, yeah, Ferenc Varsh is cruising. Uh -uh. Because three minutes later, uh, James, after an Elkrem uh, assist, gets the, uh, gets the 1 2, and 10 minutes later, uh, Elkrem himself makes it 2 2. Game on. Very crazy game. Um, and at that moment, then Molde is on the push forward and they actually get the leading goal. So they make a 0 2 deficit and a 3 2 lead through Ellingsen in the 83rd. But they would not get the win because uh, they give away a penalty. Yeah, handball. Uh, that uh, Haratin makes 3 3. So you would think Ferenc Varos is looking in a stronger position there to go through. But a big performance by Ferenc Varos. Um, I still would say it is all open there. The other decisive advantage I think we gotta give to Dinamo Kiev, who take a very early to Supriaga. Also, Kiev uh, really, int I mean, it's not necessarily a Kiev uh, jersey, but a really interesting jersey with the uh, horizontal pinstripes. Uh, they get the lead through Supriaga in the ninth, uh, control the game, and it's uh, again to already saw uh, when they played against the Rapid, is having some trouble. They get the equalizer, uh, I think it was a Dorsch corner or a free kick and Kleindienst, uh, another German, heads it in. Uh, but then they shoot themselves in the foot when Bezos uh, within three minutes gets two yellow cards and is sent off. And from that moment on then, 
Kiev is controlling the game uh, very, very patiently and they find a breakthrough uh, when a pass is, uh, is deflected through the Pena who can pull it into net 2-1, could have maybe even been 3-1, who knows. Uh, so I would say that's the other game where I see a decisive advantage. I don't see it with Salzburg winning 2-1 away from home after what they have shown, but uh, maybe that, that's the other one. Interesting stuff in the playoffs. I'm um, looking forward to the return legs where we have the three games from Wednesday. We will first want to so finish with Omonia against Olympiakos, Ferencvaros Molde and Dinamo Kiev Gent. And then with Jülland Slavia, uh, Red Bull, Maccabi and Pauk Krasnodar all to be played. Let me know if you saw any of the games. Uh, fill me in, especially in the Wednesday games, because I didn't see much of those. Uh, maybe the Fer Molde Ferencvaros game in the first half was a little bit better. So I don't know. I only saw all the highlights and the commentators didn't comment much. He said, let's jump straight into the second half. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!